Tov, I encourage you to have Megillus Esther, which you can find in the back of the stone chumash. Oh. Uh, will you get me one to? We will be, uh, in terms of looking inside the text, we'll be starting to look inside the text with Perak Bet, chapter two. I have one. Oh, I'm going to get on the page. Okay. Page 1253, but it'll be a, a few minutes before we actually look inside, I think. 1253. So I, I wanted to review a little bit because I want to add to something that I said yesterday. Uh, then it might be a different format that you have. I don't know. I, don't know that too. I have 1253 in here, but you want me to get out of there. Just look for me, out of there. Uh, that's probably the half tower that you came to, but uh, oh, there we go. I guess we, we do have a couple of different okay. versions. Okay. But, sorry, what page is it in that version? Uh, okay. It's the first one, I think. The first one. Oh, Oh, that's okay. Mm. okay, well, we just first I want to review from last week. So last week we dealt with, uh, it with uh, one of the questions we dealt with was why do we need Parak Aleph? Mm -hmm. You see the first Parak had to do a lot with the palace, with these lavish parties, with things that are going on, certain more in Jewish, you know, you know, why do we have it? That was a Salavetra's question. And we went through a few answers. Just uh, very quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll refresh uh, our memory on maybe three of them. And that was that number one is that sometimes the Jew thinks that what world events that are taking place, what do they have to do with me? You know, we have our, our own little plots, you know, and we were into our own things, but we see that that's not always true. That very often world events are very connected to Jewish uh, history and destiny. And with the with the concept, and maybe maybe this war has happened already, hopefully, but that even the coming of the Mashiach is tied to being sometime after the Battle of Gog and Magog, which are two non-Jewish countries, whatever they represent. It might be right it, now. It, or it might have been already World War II, and this is just maybe, a little bit, you know, leftover. Just sure. and, and, yeah, and who would think sometimes, you know, what's happening with Ukraine and this and look, you know, they don't even know how many Jews are in Ukraine today because um, not everybody identifies. It could be hundreds of thousands of Jews. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so that that was one message of that chapter. Number two was for us to try to understand a little bit of who Achashverosh was, and that because of um, some some character flaws that he had. Um, you know, he had a, a, a big, 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 a big temptation for uh, for luxuries, for women, for parties, for wine. He had an uncouth personality. He really was not from arist arist aristocracy. He was a, more of a common person. He sort of connected 
better with the second short party of seven days than he did with the six month party with all the, uh, the, the officers. He, he was uh, paranoid. He, he lacked respect for the dignity of others, particularly for, uh, for, for women. And Ralph Soloveitchik said it's because of his personality and, be, and because of what was, was taking place in those times that, that could allow someone like a Hummer to rise to a high position also. So it's, it's like even more repercussions in terms of how healthy the society is that we live in can, can impact, impact upon some very, very decent people. Although we'll see most likely today that it's not as if we didn't open up ourselves to possible uh, negative uh, circumstances. We also talked about the fact that <clears throat> that Achasheresh's uh, edict announcing that every husband has to be in charge of the household was uh, not really accepted so well and thought and people thought it was really kind of foolish type of thing so <clears throat> so uh, Achasheresh's credibility started to be uh, weakened what we did not talk about I think, I'm sure there are a lot of things we didn't talk about but uh, that 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 last uh, the second feast, the second part of the Achashverosh uh, uh, threw in uh, Shushan Habira. Okay, how long did that last? Seven days. Seven, seven days. And on what day did Achashverosh uh, call, summon for, Ach, for Vashti to show up and entertain? What day? Also, the seventh day, the last day. A little bit interesting, really, is that since uh, even Rav Soloveitchik, you know, paints it that that was the party that Achashverosh was really more at home in, you know, with just getting together with with the guys, you know, and drinking a lot. And, but you know, you you think maybe right away he yeah, why uh, did they he, do it he, the last day? He, why not the sense. last day? So not. It, 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 one of the answers, and this would be the Rav Soloveshi focus on, in a way, is Hashkacha Pratis, because it says, it says, Uvayom Hashri'i, right? right. right. Uh, that, that it should have been, that that's when Achashverosh, maybe he had these feelings even earlier in the week. So but it happened because when, if I said to you, if we weren't talking about the, 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 the Purim story and the parties, and I said to you, oh, by Yom Hashri, what might you say? What's Yom Hashri? What's Shabbos? Shabbos. Uh -huh. By Yom Hashri. That's if you start right? on Sunday. Does it? Uh, but you know, if you start it doesn't, on, but it doesn't Tuesday. matter. It doesn't matter because we're not calling it Sunday. We're calling it the seventh day. Right. So it's a, so the seventh day doesn't matter. It could have been a Wednesday. It doesn't matter. But it's identified as Yom Hashri. Okay. This the Yom Hashri in, in the Megillah in the first parak is the furthest thing that you could imagine from the a Torah way of life, really. Okay. And um, you know, and, and, and it was, the, and it was this, on the seventh day. That's when Achashverosh got the most loops that he could think of calling the queen, the queen who had yichus to the throne. He Achishere didn't have blood yichus to, to the throne. So, so yeah, so he was very drunk. You know, we it, it, when we celebrate holidays, we celebrate them with food. You know, we're known for that. Just but 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 you're not supposed to be getting drunk. Even on Purim, where there's a mitzvah to drink more than usual, but it's odd the loyata. You're not supposed to lose yourself. And, and has to show them if, you, if you're not going to perform mitzvahs from it, then you don't, you don't, you don't drink, even if it, even if it means a little bit. You can't if that get if what sets a person off, then you don't, you don't get into that to, to that state. If, if anything, you know, on, on that on that seventh day of our week, every single week, we we sanctify the meal, and 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 we add, and it becomes part of our having a deeper relationship with Rabbanu Shalom. So this were two different worlds we're talking about. The worlds of, of the of the Persian secular, you know, the society, the non-Jewish society, and the, and the Jewish world. Very, very different worlds that we're talking about, which may come up soon to actually to uh, play a factor in what we're going to take a look at uh, new today. So, pasuk five, hey, in Perik Bet. Chapter two. Ish Yehudi Hayabushan Habira. There was a Jewish man in, in the in the capital city of Shushan. Ushmo Mordechai, his name was Mordechai, the son of Yair, the son of Shimi, who was the son of Kish, who was from an Ishimini, meaning he was from Shepet Binyamin. By the way, not just from Shepet Binyamin, but you know, the, the 
especially in, on, on Esther's side, which so is actually connected to King uh, Saul, Shavu HaMelech. But how many Jewish men were there in Shushan Habira? Uh, more than one, right? Ish Yehudi. Now it doesn't say Mordechai Ha Yehudi. You know Hayab Shushan Habira. It's Ish Yehudi. There's this Jewish guy. Yeah, this right. Jewish guy in Shushan Habira. But there are a lot of Jewish guys. Okay, but he had a special position. What? 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 He was sitting with Shaul Melech, and so forth. He wasn't stam anybody. That's why they mentioned him. Right, but he, but he's not at this time in the story. He's not sitting in. in okay, uh, but like, that's why you yeah. mentioned him. But, uh, but, okay, could be, could be. Uh, 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 um, Rav Salavet looks at and says that there was nobody who paralleled Mordechai in his commitment to the Jewish community. But he was, he was, he was, he was in a, a league of his own. It was totally outstanding in terms of, uh, of what he was willing to do on behalf of the Jewish people, what he, what he dedicated efforts to. Very, you know, singular, very singular person. But he also had that he, he um, realized that somebody is plotting to kill the king later later. Later. no what? not later on okay. he, that was he did that ahead of time and they brought it up later but he did that before okay. so, so but no they did not honor him for that but later it came out okay. well, so right. we're going to get this right very now. very very soon we're going to get there maybe uh, you help us understand that connection a little bit better good good thought so i um so after we're introduced to, to Mordechai, and you know it's a long pasuk, and it tells us that he you know, came, he was exiled, um, you know, from Yerushalayim, and you know was forced to start his life over again in, in the Persian Empire. First, you know, Babel, then maybe you know he was part of the, he was there, I guess, you know, the uh, the, the Achashverosh overthrew the Babylonian rule, so that uh, Mordechai was witness to that. But then we're told about a family connection, you know, that, that he cared for the young Hadassah, who was also known as Esther, who was his, his cousin. And she was, she was a, an orphan of both parents. And Rabbi Soloveitchik notes that we're not just talking about the Ish, but there's an Isha also here on the scene. And that, that was, that was uh, you know, you know a, a typical course. It's, it was Abraham and Sarah. It was Yitzchak and Rivka. It was Yaakov and Rachel and, and Leah. And the, okay. That were her name. Of who? Oh, forget about Esther. We're speaking about Mordechai, his wife. No, right. She's well. He may not have had a wife either, right now. So, I mean, according to the Medrash, Mordechai actually wound up marrying, you know, his cousin, and that uh, she was his wife. But we don't know for sure. Yes, no, maybe yes, maybe no. But um, but there are hints to it. There, there's hints to it. I don't. We won't get to that today. Maybe next week we'll see. Um, but. You know, it's a very, very important message. You see in the Chumash also, Moshe, Moshe's mother you know, plays an important role. Miriam definitely, you know, she's a Nivea, a prophetess. She rises you know, uh, up. We have Hannah and playing a, a, a special role. We have Zavara, you know, a prophetess. So um, we're ahead of the curve in, the, in world developments in, uh, in recognizing the talents of, of, of women. Rav Soloveitchik says that Mordechai and Esther had an equal role, but not, but not a, an identical role in the story. And uh, in the text that I use, you know, to review some of Rav Soloveitchik's thoughts, it, does, it doesn't state this here, but Rav Soloveitchik, uh, in one of his annual Yurtzeit rushes that would occur um, around Purim time, so uh, he, he said that... Um, you know, the, the creation of the of the man and the woman were different creations. You know, the uh, Adam was created from the dust of the earth. Uh, uh, Chava was created from uh, a human being. 
different building blocks. So it's like you said that one of the differences uh, between the man and the woman is that the, and that everything is uh, you know in broad categories. You, have, you can have exceptions, of course, but that uh, that the man sometimes is a better uh, hypothetical, theoretical thinker. And the woman is better at practical application. So what? So yeah. So what is so Mordechai's? What, what what's Mordechai's main role in in the part of the Purim story that's most important to us in our redemption? What's Mordechai's main role? Okay, good. And does Esther take Mordechai's advice? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes and no. Yeah, at first she's hesitant because she realizes that she could be executed and that she won't be too useful to anybody, you know, that she's dead. But but Mordechai, what does Mordechai actually, what does Mordechai actually tell Esther uh, when he finds it, finds out about? I'm going to be saved just because you are the queen. No, 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 no. But what no, at first, what when he's telling her the problem, what, what at, and he has he has a solution for it. What, should, what, what did she tell? Go and talk to the king. Right, right. And, and does Esther do that? Well, first she said. So the answer is no, if it's first. first <laughs> that's it. So that, that, that's, that's the important thing. Okay. She says that, that that's not the way to do it. Yeah. Mordechai wants her not to waste any time. So you, you got to go in, you got to talk to the king, you got to persuade him. And, and Esther says, no, 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 no. We have to prepare for this. I'm gonna okay. fast. I'm go I'm yes. going to fast. Everybody else should be fasting. We have to pray for three days. Okay. You do so you your three days. I'm gonna do myself. my three days, and then I'm gonna go talk to the king. Right. And even there, even there, you know, Esther has. Uh, I mean, this is not this week's uh, uh, discussion, but she has her own idea. Her big solution is to have a party. All right, it's a small party, but um, you know, it's not maybe not what we would have thought. So, so she told, and, and obviously she she knew best. What she did work. Well, actually, I think, and, and I really didn't appreciate it as much until even this morning when I was looking over the Megillah again, um, what she what she really accomplished. So, uh, not that I wanted. To, I mean, we know what she accomplished. Bottom line, but the, her her strategy of, of getting there, after thinking more carefully about what we're talking about here and what's going to, to happen. Uh, and uh, I, I, I just appreciate it on a deeper level and maybe a different level of, of, of how Esther actually won Ahasuerus's trust and basically toppled Haman. You know, that, that's, that's, what, that's what she did. So, the... Um, Okay, can you, can you describe what this situation is like? One of the things that, uh, that Mordechai right now, the dark, tells Esther is, what are they watch what you say, or more explicitly, watch, watch what you don't say. What does he tell Esther not to say? She's Jewish. Right. And so why, why do you think that? Why, why, why is that important not to say she's Jewish? Uh, and, you, uh, and you think more I wanted her to be taken as please? Uh, whoever picked, I'm not sure about that. Uh, if you had to argue it the other way, and what would a reason be for Mordechai not to want Esther to be a queen? Besides for the fact that he may, she may have been his wife, which would be, you know, a very, very. She'd be a nation That's right. That's right. I mean, according to, you know, according to the sources. So when Esther, you know, slept with Akashverosh, whenever that. Happened, she was um, not really an active participant, and, and she was. She, she was uh, her, her plan. That's what she said. It is at the moment part of Ukraine. It's an umbrella organization which brings together organization. That's a, a support that, that Mordecai and 
you know, actually marry. But Rose, you anybody who wants to become queen, what would you say? Let's say, wait, um, I think if. You, were you, uh, were you on, online hearing me at all up till now? Uh, parts of the audio um, were, um, how do I say it? There was like a, your words were, um, and it looked, it looked to me that that, that uh, my all of a sudden my microphone says it was muted. So I, I'm yeah. unmuting me, but, okay. uh, but you you mute yourselves because I think I'm hearing myself over the computer. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, Rabbi Green. Is it possible that since we've already seen in the story that one, so to speak, queen was put to death based on the could be another reason that she was concerned. Yeah. She was good. Yeah. I'd be worried about that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. He didn't take her. She was picked. Yes. Right, but it doesn't mean that uh, I told you last week about this play that, that did it the other way around, you know, that it was wrong. You know, it wasn't reading the text. It wasn't, they didn't know Dick Dook. Uh, but you know, Esther was forcibly taken. She didn't want to be taken, yeah, and she um, taken. but uh, she didn't go ahead and spend you know an hour putting on her makeup, you know, because she didn't, uh, because but, she but so. But um, could it be that there was greater danger for her if she was identified as being Jewish? Yeah. Because yeah. of the attitude of the Persians towards the Jews, they would have. I mean, it could be that she would be slaughtered straight out if she would have. Um, identified as Jewish, that's, that's probably there was not. Um, maybe we, we we don't know for sure. I mean, you know, there there certainly are, you know, accounts of uh, of different times when there were good relations between the Jews and well, the and the Persian whole, rulers. If he made his whole mishnah and his whole thing, and he came out in in the the kalim of the of the base of Mikdash, I mean. He was not a friend of the Jews. Well, but he, but the Jews were invited to the party also, right. and there are different ways of looking at that. So like some look at his bringing out the, at the vessels that he had a certain reverence. But maybe he didn't know how to, he's an uncouth person, so he may not understand how you express reverence. But that he had some kind of admiration for these vessels from the from the Holy Beit Hamikdash. So it wasn't that he was trying to trample them per se, you know. Even though people could be drinking from them, you think that we would think would be uh, you know not appropriate. But he may for him he he may have had a certain reverence to it, you know, as, as, as well. Yes, I think, I think that uh, the reason why he didn't want uh, Esther to say it, because he didn't want Haman, who hated him so much, uh, to know that she is related. After all, he was like a Ben Melech. He was like the second to the king. And uh, so obviously, you're talking about Haman was the second to the king. Who was second to the king? Who was second? To the king? Mordech, Mordech, Mordech. No, no. Uh, Haman. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And, and so obviously, he liked Haman, so he didn't want her uh, to know. The, the, uh, to know that right, but he, Hama was not quite, he wasn't that yeah, high. He's going to be promoted a, he afterwards. Was, he was yeah. just standing it's, um, next to the gate of the, of the bay. So, uh, um, I think, yeah, if you look, it, it, uh, if you, uh, you know, we, 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 we started here at Pasuk, um, uh, what Pasuk we in Perak Bed. Pus, uh, okay, okay, but 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 Haman doesn't get promoted until until later until later on. Just uh, two two other two other thoughts though. That you know, again, so we had this again having that ha having Perak Aleph giving us that those the party and 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 with the uh, the the uncouth behavior. 
and, and we talk about Yom Hashvi, what Yom Hashvi means for a Jew, and it was just the opposite there, you really wouldn't want a nice Jewish girl to, to be the, make, making th this palace her home. It, 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 all the signals are just, you know, you know, so opposite. You know that she's there to do something for Yeshua. We didn't know what. Yeah, so that, that's very interesting. So, so here we have like a couple of different approaches. So Rashi brings down the opinion. Why should she not say anything? In other words, when, when you don't want to say too much, like uh, I, I joke a little bit, but, but it really could be serious. It's like, you know, you, you know, many of you know that we Barbara and I have a, a daughter and her family live in Australia. And Australia was the, you know, uh, was the, uh, the out of country prison for a lot of criminals from or people that they called criminals from Great Britain. So like in Australia, you don't necessarily want to ask somebody, oh, how long has your family been in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> because if they've been there for a couple of hundred years, you know, it might mean that they come from prison. So, so you know, so so if you don't want, so people who don't want to talk about their background too much, you might say usually because they don't want to reveal something that's embarrassing. And there's always so 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 Rashi says that that's what Mordechai was trying to do. He was trying to get Esther disqualified, even though she was you know taken already. He says, you know, don't tell them anything about yourselves. And they're going to say, oh, she must have a, you know, a shady past. The king's not going to want to marry somebody and have skeletons come up, you know, you know, about his new bride. So he was trying to get her, you know, out of, out of this. On the other hand, the, the, uh, the Alshir talks about... The Asher maybe even, it definitely brings down. I'm 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 uh, I'm not seeing right away how he uses it, but uh, yeah. she as as I at least alluded to earlier uh, that Esther was a descendant of King Saul. So it could what's be it could be what's the connection? I mean, generally the generally speaking, in the royalty, royalty tries to marry royalty. That's the way it goes usually. So, so if, if it were known that Esther was actually a I descendant a of, a, of a Jewish king, so then, uh, you know, maybe that'd be another reason Achishesh would like her. And maybe, you know, you know Mordechai sure. didn't want that. But the, but the, but the, but the, but the Alshich, the Alshich goes on to, uh, to speak about, uh, about Mordechai's, you know, sort of insight to, to what was happening here. You know, it, to him at first, it was it was quite unusual to think that it, you know that Esther should be chosen as the queen. And and by the way, if she were at this point not only Mordechai's cousin but also his wife at this point, then cousins are allowed to marry each other halachically. Uh, and especially even today, although I, I was told just recently that they're cutting down on it, but in the Persian Jewish community, you know, in the United States and others, it's a very high level of people marrying cousins, you know, within the family. So I think they're starting to move away from that. But luckily, it's, that's, that's permitted, permissible. But um, so, so for Mordechai to think, how could this be like, you know, you know, for my family, a descendant of, 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 of King Saul should be picked you know, to, to, be, to be the queen. It, it was like, what's, what's going on here? And then he, and then he saw that the, that, you know, the Jews were, he, he knew, he, 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 the Auschwitz said that he must have gone up and screamed at the Jews, don't go to those parties, don't go to the, the, the party with the, the tray, you know, that you shouldn't, you shouldn't be there. And now he's starting to put it together that with all the difficulty, he's starting to think, you know, well, maybe there's something here. Maybe the Rabboni Shalom, you know, has a plan and that Esther is part of a plan. It's difficult, you know, you know, in the, in the Chumash, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Moshe, Hashem spoke to them. They knew exactly what they should do and not, not to do. This is already post-prophecy. So, you know, Mordechai had to make some very big decisions about what was happening. And he had to wait and see. In in, uh, in many ways, but wasn't she chosen just because she was so beautiful? As far as the people who chose her, who were looking at Raya far 
and so forth. That was the main reason why they chose them, not because of our yichas. Well, take, okay, so take a look in uh, Pasuk Yud Zion, Parak Bet, Pasuk Yud Zion. Parak Bet, did you say? Parak Bet. Okay. Pasuk Yud Zion. Vayehav HaMelech et Estem. Vayehav HaMelech et that the, the king loved Esther more than that, uh, any of the I'm other saying. women. Yeah. And she carried a sense of, um, of right. charm and grace that's before right. him okay. uh, over all, you know, all, more so than all the other women. And then okay. by Yasin, by uh, Ketem the Rosha. It doesn't say that she was beautiful. It said it before. But it did, say, it did say it before. That's true. Uh -huh. At least as a younger woman, she was. That's it. Did say that. But what does it say? Why? Why, why did in plus six seventeen? Why? Why did the king choose her? He, she found favor in his eyes. Is that, the, is, that the only, the, is that the only thing? That's already when she was chosen. That's not why she. Well, interesting, by the way, it doesn't say in his eyes, by the way, which might be you know, an interesting point. But what else? What, what, what else? What, uh, what about the beginning of the process? So there were, there were two reasons. He had this, this some type of infatuation with her and yeah, he was so attracted to, to her. Okay. And it does come first. But there was that other dimension. We spoke about the other dimension last week that there was something about her. It was very spiritual. We spoke that chain. That chain is something that emanates from a person's inside mm -hmm. and comes out. It's not skin deep, you know, beauty. There was something else about her. So, uh, I mean, Achashers wasn't at Sadiq. So it's not as if he only, you know, looked at that second thing. But there were... Two different aspects to okay, so uh, to test it. Thanks for what I but, said. Uh, uh, you know, looking from a, a different end of the uh, of the story, um, you know, if um, I don't know, you know, if, if we had, let's say, if we had a Jewish senator from Florida, let's say, uh, we have very two very pro-Israel. Senators in Florida. We've, we've had a, we had a Jewish senator from, from Florida. Uh, how would Jews handle that? If they were talking to people, with people that were, they were even comfortable with, you know, with what, what would they say? Hmm? I mean, this is explaining. No, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about McGill right now. Just say, you know, if we had a Jewish senator, what would, what, how, what would we say? We'd be proud of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's good, you know, look at that, you know. Jewish, yeah, we, we almost had a Jewish vice president and uh, you know, oh, you know, with uh, Lieberman, fine, fine gentleman. So, um, you know, so here it is. So here Mordechai, you know, at the very least, his, his cousin is, is, you know, becomes the queen. But he tells her not to talk about family relationships. He doesn't talk about family relationships. He's not bragging. And, you know, and Rav Soloveitchik said, that Mordechai was very humble, and that uh, part of part of what led to his hum humbleness is that he understood that that we're very vulnerable, and he understood that the Jewish community was vulnerable because they did deviate a lot from the Torah law. So, so as, as much as he was a decent and Arabic uh, Jewish person himself, but the, the circumstances in in Babel in the Persian Empire. Uh, made him, you know, even more humble, and because he was humble, he was cautious. That's what, that's why he hung out. You know, he almost never went home. He hung out in, in the court to yeah, on the one on the one hand to find out what was, was happening. On the other hand, sort of to be a symbol. Some of the fortune bring down that when Esther would look out the window and see him from afar, that uh, that she would be reminded of the deal that she had, not to reveal her her, her background. So ultimately, it takes time, but ultimately those characteristics, you know, and, and the partnership between Mordechai and Esther and the, and the characteristics that each of them have, you know, bring success and bring, help to bring the redemption and the resolution to what was a really, a very, very, uh, you know, big problem. By the way, you know, I have said this a couple of times in shul, but uh, a long time ago, I was, uh, I don't remember if I was, a, I think I was an advisor right, in NCSY. There was a national convention at one of the um, Jewish frequented ho hotels, you know, a totally kosher hotel. So, uh, and Rabbi Zweig, who's Rosh Hashiva in Miami, was giving a session. And this is the session he said in the Torah, there's no word for being modest or humble. Sure. That's right. Exactly. So, that's what a lot of people started to say. 
So he said, he said, no, that's not what the word means. That actually, what what word is, is anav related to? But ayinun yudvav. What to what? I'm sorry. Anivav. No, no, that's what a vet, right? Well, that's that's a vet. Anavim. Oh, anavim. Ayin, ayin, anav. It's you know, it's like the same. Okay. So, it, so um, I don't know if I was like mentioned that or not, but that would seem to be the basis for what he's saying is that anav means to be objective. If a human being is objective, then we're going to be modest because you know who are we in this world? But being objective is important because it also means that if you know you have certain strengths, you should make sure that you use them, you know, and, and not be you know over modest. Yes. The point. No, no, no. For Harold, Harold and Mike Golden. We have in terms that Asif uh, says. <clears throat> Each day, work by his hair in the by the harem. Find out what's going on with Esther. Mm -hmm. that, that's before she became chosen. Yes. And uh, would that raise suspicion as to what a person like him is doing in a place like that and why he's checking out Esther? Okay, good question. I'm, I, you know, in, in the end, it obviously does it, and whether or not it's because the guy in charge maybe had a, a liking for Mordechai or whatever it was, and we don't know um, the, the uh, you know, the distances between the Beit HaNashim where the candidates were kept in the palace, you know, we don't know, um, but uh, interesting what question, interesting yeah. question. Michael, and then, and then... Yeah, we're just thinking, you know, in the Torah, uh, Hashem prevents Abimelech from having sexual relations with Sarah and then with, uh, you know, so they say, well, that's what went on in that kind of society. Uh, you know, that Avram was kind of upset that it's an immoral society. But Sarah and, and Rivka's being and reputation are upheld by Hashem because they're married to the patriarchs. So if Esther is married to Mordecai, you would think that Hashem would protect her and her innocence in some way. So uh, just a couple of comments, let me say. N number one, you know, Avimelech and Ahasuerus were probably just about opposites to one another. You know, Avimelech is upset with Abraham. He has to calm down. And interesting, Abraham doesn't talk to him while he's upset. He has to calm down, rephrase his, his question when he asked Abraham in the morning, you know, why he did, did not tell him the truth. But but in, Ab, in Abimelech, in his dream, when Hashem appears to him, he says, I, I, I didn't know she was married. I wouldn't have touched her if I knew she was married. And Hashem says, I know that. Hashem testified that, that basically with, within his society, Abimelech was a decent guy. And he had a certain degree yeah. of morale, morality. I mean, the problem is like Abraham tells him, the problem is, is that there's no higher authority. Abimelech. You make the laws so we, you can change the laws. But he was a, a moral being. We could not say that about Achishverosh. He didn't have that that degree of morality in in the way that in, in, in what we see, you know, of of, of him. Mm -hmm. Number two is that you know the uh, Avot and Imahot had direct, you know, you know, a, a very direct type of. I mean, not not as direct as Moshe Rabbeinu had, but they had a very close and uh, uh, communication with Hashem. They had prophecies from Hashem. Mordechai again is post prophecy period, and it's not just the prophecy that's missing, but you know the Gemara says uh, when, when when God decides to uh, back off, and you know when we say like in Modim we thank Hashem for being with us, you know all the time, every day, morning, afternoon, um, it's had a lot a lot could go wrong in this world. We don't appreciate it most of the time. It goes right, thank God. You know it's like you know someone uh, I, I forget I heard maybe uh, somewhere in the shul. I, I think I heard someone, you know, tell this uh, this uh, little story. Uh, I, I heard a little different version of it, but this guy is, you know, uh, driving into Manhattan for a business meeting. There's more traffic than he realized, and it's a really important meeting. And he doesn't want to be late, and after you know searching and you know for spots, and can't, he can't find them, and the lots are busy, and he's looking at his watch, and he starts praying to God. He says, Hashem, Hashem, please, this is so important to this meeting. Please, if, if you, you know, if you could just give me that spot, I'm going to give a big contribution, you know, to the Torah fund. 
So, and, and just at that moment, a car pulls out right in front of him. God, forget it. I found it. <laughs> you know, so we don't appreciate, we don't appreciate, you know, what Daisha might be doing for us uh, a, a good part of the time. The Shorn is supposed to uh, sensitize us to, to that um, a little bit. But, but sometimes we, we, we lose the, um, the qualification for having Hashem be, being so worried about us. And when Hashem is not, not worried, when Hashem pulled back and says, you know, I'm, I have to take a vacation, you know, we'll just let the world run its natural course and human beings run their natural course. That's when, that, you know, that's, that's called Hestepanim. And that's, and that's, and that's, that's usually... That's usually worse, you know. If when Hashem is controlling the world, even if we do something wrong, so it, the, the response is a measured response. But if there's hest upon because of our actions that we distance Hashem, so a lot of different things can happen. So it, it's a it's a complicated. You know, I can't tell you what the exact status was, but the point system was, you know. But there are a lot of factors going in trying to uh, to understand what was taking place. Yes. Okay. Well, coming back to Megillah Esther, the main thing that aggravated Mordechai, uh, aggravated um, Haman to get against the Jews was that Mordechai didn't want to bow to him. Mm -hmm. So that's okay, yeah. one you, of them. You, you're, 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 you're good. You're, you're, you're on track to what we're going to talk about, no, but, but just hold, but just hold to... it for a moment, okay? We're going to talk about that. But we're going to talk about it. That is the whole story about yeah. Miguel and Esther that we have to we have to understand that, that we always had people like Haman, we always had people against us, but in this is. particular case, that is the instigation of Miguel of Esther, that he didn't want to... Well, that, it's definitely... So it, 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 he, it, he, it, it, it's part of it. We'll take a look. We'll take a look. Before that, I, um, I want to go a little bit earlier, chronologically, one of the one what's coming up is that while Mordechai is you know hanging out by the palace, yes, right at the at post of twenty post of twenty post of twenty one cup cup olive that 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 let, let's read it by Amim Haheim in those days who Mordechai Yoshe Bashar Hamelech so Mordechai was sitting in, in the, the gates of, of the of the, uh, of the king by the palace Katsaf Bigtan Vateresh. Big and, and Teresh uh, got angry. Right? What, how do they translate? You have the English in front of you in, for Pasuk 21? Or is it, how do they translate Katsaf? Okay, angry. So they, two officers uh, of the king from the, uh, they, they were the gods of the Saf, different explanations of what that is. One is that they were in charge of the wine, and the other is that they were in charge of the, the private residence of the king inside the palace. By Yivakshuli Shloach Yad, they uh, they had a plan to harm the king, Akhashverosh. The king, Shloach right. Yad is the king. So, okay. And then, okay. And so, like so, and and, and, right. and then Mordechai, so Mordechai by Yivada Hadavala Mordechai, it became known to him. You know, they didn't just go up to him and say, "Hey, Mordechai, you want to hear something cool? Guess what? The two of us are planning on doing." You know, that did not happen. In fact, you know, the, um, I mean, the most that they say is, the Medrash says that, that to be a member of the Sanhedrin, you have to know uh, the 70 languages of the world. So pretty high qualification. Wow. And, um, and it wasn't the only qualification. So, uh, so Mordechai un uh, overheard some key words, even with that, but he didn't hear the whole, whole thing. He had to, he had to do a, a lot of um, figuring out. But when you look at, when you look at that post, post of 21, what what phrase would you say maybe is the most important to know and and then tell me a, a phrase or two that might not be really so important. What, what do you think? What is? Well, yeah, take, take a take a deep, first. You need to take uh, fifteen seconds to think. I think the word. Not, not, we're not up yet. Not, not fifteen seconds to think. <laughs> now now twelve ten seconds to think. Okay, Margley, what do you say? I say the word Yoshe, the Shara Mela. Okay. Why? What? If what? he wouldn't have been there, he wouldn't have heard. Oh, that, uh, <laughs> uh, so that's one of the, okay, okay. 
Okay, so good. Known all uh, the all, okay, uh, right. So you know, so it's good. It's not um, um, It's a good point. It's not um, Mordechai b'shar hamelach. The Mordechai happened to be at the gates. He was Yoshev in the Hover, right. which means that he always did that. Right. Not, not, it's not just Hover because right. oh, I see him. See, it's hard. It's that's what he would always do. Right. Good. Okay. Right. Good. Good. Yes. The main thing is why I get the spell. If you want to talk to her, you right. It's not. It's not in that poster. She's right. That's the next poster. <laughs> I said poster. Poster cuff out of twenty one. Rabbi Green. It's not done the test. Think it's important. Okay, so but but in the end, does it really matter what brought them to assassinate the king once it tells us the Shloach Yad that they wanted no, to kill him? Does it doesn't you know? So if if they were in charge of the wine, so the plan was to poison the wine. And if they were in, uh, in charge of him being in the, uh, you know, in, in, his, in his private, you know, bedroom, so um, it still could have been, you know, whatever drink, you know, even a drink of water. Um, you right. know, it's interesting. Some, some of the, you know, some of the opinions say, well, I think the major says, what were they angry about? They said that this guy, I, I, he wants to, I bring him water every three minutes. I have to go ahead and get slept down. You know, they don't just turn on the tap and stuff. You know, it was a big job. They were upset. You know that they were working too hard, but does it really matter? And yeah. really, the key, especially for us no, in, in the Megillah, it, it just matters that there was an assassination plot in Mordecai and Bailey. Well, I don't care. Yeah. You know, maybe the king didn't hold the door open for the guy's uh, brother matter. who happened to be yeah, coming well, into the. It doesn't they, really matter why they want to assassinate him. So, so, so I think. Yeah, so it's a, that's a good point, and um, so I, I think I think it's one of two things. Let's let, let's try to listen to one another. At least not not have private conversations because then the, we can't hear. Um, it could be that this is telling us that some time went by. You know, we like to think this Megillah is a, a quick story, but it opens up. The parties are in the third year of Achashverosh's reign. The beauty contest is in the seventh year of Achashverosh's reign. And when Haman's either if he's either in the eleventh or the twelfth year of Achashverosh's reign, so these these events are not happening, you know, chick chak chak chak, you know, this is a developing over a period of time, which in a way, you know, makes it, you know, so much more challenging and, and to accept Esther being in the palace for uh, like four years and not being needed for anything for the Jewish community. It's like you know, you know Mordechai might have been thinking I must have been wrong. I thought you know I thought this was an important thing, but maybe it's not such an important thing that she has to be the queen, you know, of the Persian Empire. But so it could be that time is going by by Amim Hain, or it could also be like like that Yoshe. Maybe it's also telling us that um, maybe not. I would say maybe time going by or or. Um, or maybe saying that that's the, that, that the air was, you know, maybe Achishverosh, even though we, uh, he's called paranoid, but certainly this episode here teaches us that he's not totally off base, you know, and, and, and we shouldn't be surprised. He, he, he overthrew the Babylonian, you know, uh, ruling party. So, uh, you know, um, listen, the, uh, uh, one of the wealthy uh, Russian uh, oligarchs living, I, I think he's in the United States now, I'm not sure, he's been in a few different countries at one point running for his life, but he offered a, a million dollar reward for the, the, the arrest. Um, um, and then later on, it's, I mean, that's one thing to say for the arrest if, you, if Putin violated you know, Russian law. But in the article, then he said, dead or alive. You know, I mean, that's, you know, I don't think he's going back to Russia too soon, right? So, but, uh, but and, and it doesn't mean that they can't come out, you know, after him, just, you know, as they sent an assassination squad after Zelensky. So, so maybe this is, maybe that's what the words mean. Like, this is the time. This is, these are things where we're happening. Maybe, maybe, but, but it's definitely a good point. You don't always have to have an answer to the question. The question is, uh, is, is, is more important because it'll, it'll lead to an answer eventually. So, um, we have a couple of questions. Oh, oh we'll deal with one question. Why did Mordechai save Achashverosh's life? Might have been a relief to Esther. Esther he, yeah, he may not have been 
ever re reunified with time. Esther because you, the, the king's widow is not going to be allowed to go back, you know, and just leave a regular life and marry anybody else uh, like that. Uh, it certainly it does not have a political type of arrangement. So wouldn't it have been maybe more expedient if Mordecai actually allowed the assassination plot no, to couldn't. go on? He couldn't do that. It says that you're supposed to pray for the Melech Shalom because you don't know who the next one might be. Might okay, be good. Right, so, good. That, that's one of the answers so far, given. Good. Okay, so far, good. So that's so far, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, good. Good. The, the Maharal, it's actually, I think, the last uh, maybe answer that the Maharal of Prague brings in. Good. Very good. Well, Michael? It's also possible Haman's next in line to the throne. He wouldn't want that. <laughs> okay. 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 The first, the first answer that the Maharal brings down is that if you look at, uh, you know, Yaakov when he goes to meet the Paro, so he gives Paro a, a bracha, and uh, and when Paro had a dream and he was all upset about it, Yosef, you know, you know, interprets a dream, and Daniel does the same thing, you know, later on. So. So that, uh, you know, in the words of the Maharal, that, uh, that Mordechai said, Afani, I get less there on my car. So I'm going to reveal the information, you know, but through, uh, through um, Esther. One of the other reasons that the, uh, that the Maharal uh, uh, brought down is that, um, you know, I, 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 it, it's connected to what was said before, is that Mordechai had, he was building relationships and he was building relationships with Achashverosh too. He was known, you know, uh, who he was. So you have a, you have a, some kind of uh, access, you know, somebody else comes in, you might not have any access. It might take you years to build up the access that, that you have now. And one of, and another answer that the Mara brings down is that it shouldn't be that, you know, Mordechai was only more recently put on this post of being so close, you know, to the king. It shouldn't be that people would say, oh, Look at that. The king, the king was assassinated when we had a Jew on, you know, as part of the council. Before there was a Jew on the council, we didn't have, you know, you know, the king was safe. So for, for multiple reasons, you know, including the ones that you said, so so Mordechai does decide. Uh, maybe next week we'll start off by saying why Mordechai decides to tell it through Esther and not through not himself to make the appearance and share it. If you can ponder that uh, during the week, as uh, God willing, we'll see each other next week. Thanks for joining. Well, Esther's going to be part of the solution, a main part of the solution. But, uh, Exactly what led to the problem. We have to, there's, there's, more, there's more to learn. Thank you for joining us online. Have a good day.